All right, this is Chemistry Podcast 6.4, and we're going to talk about limiting reactants. So vocab words for limiting reactants, you need to know the difference between a limiting reactant and an excess reactant. A limiting reactant is the reactant you put in that runs out first. It's what you use completely up. Um, it is the thing that determines how much product you get. The excess reactant is what you have left over. You have enough of it. Um, it doesn't get used completely up. So this is the reactant that remains after the reaction stops. We're going to use an analogy first with cars and tires. So I have the frames for the car right here and I have eight of them. And there's 48 tires. And the question is which of those is the limiting reactant? So what we're going to do is we're going to think if I have eight car bodies, I can make eight cars because I know that one of these car bodies goes per um, car that I make. So right here, I have the eight car bodies, and I use one per car, so that means I can make eight cars total with the bodies that I have available. The other thing I have are 48 tires. Well, 48 tires, and I know that I put four tires on each car, and 48 divided by four then is 12 cars. So I have to look. With the car bodies, I can only make eight cars. With the tires, I can make 12 cars. The smallest number is always the winner here because that is the fewest amount, that is the smallest number of reactants I have available that's also determining how much product I can make. So because I only have enough car bodies to make eight cars, that is the maximum amount I can make. That means that the tires then, if this is the, it's hard to see here, but that's the limiting reactant. That must mean the tires are in excess. I have extra of them. And if we wanted to figure out how many extra, we would think about, I have enough tires left over for four more cars. So four cars are left over that I couldn't make with my tires. And there are four tires on each car. That must mean I have 16 tires left over. So eight cars were made. We used up all the car bodies because that's the limiting reactant. The excess reactant was the tires when we had 16 tires left over. So we're going to do the same type of thing, but we're going to do it with chemicals. All right, here are the steps you're going to follow when you're solving limiting reactant problems. The first step is to always, always, always have a balanced chemical reaction. Just like when we're doing any stoichiometry problem, we need to have a balanced chemical reaction. Then we're going to do the stoichiometry. We're going to take both products that they give us, and we're going to convert them into the same product. And I'll show you how that works. But it's really important that we end up in the same thing. We go to the same product, or else we can't compare our answers. Then the third step, we look at our answers and we choose the correct one and identify the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. And then finally, we calculate how much excess reactant remains unreacted. And this step is sometimes optional. They don't always ask you to do this, but if they do, you're going to start with the limiting reactant that you identified from step three, and you're going to go to the excess reactant, and you'll be able to figure out how much of the excess reactant was used and how much you have left over. So we're only going to do one problem together in this podcast because they take up a little bit of time. We'll do a lot more in class. But this question is, a 2-gram sample of ammonia is mixed with 4 grams of oxygen. Which reactant is the limiting reactant? How much excess reactant remains after the reaction has stopped? So step one, we said, was to write a balanced chemical reaction. And it's a little hard to tell with this one, so I'm just going to write it for you. But ammonia is NH3, and it's reacted with oxygen. And that gives us nitrogen monoxide and water. So there are the formulas, then I need to balance it. Um, if I look at hydrogens, I have three on this side and two over here. So I'm going to go for six, and there would be three. That would make six hydrogens there, and there's six hydrogens. So then I have two nitrogens, which means I'm going to put a two here. And then on this side, I have three oxygens plus another two is five. And I get an odd number. So what I do is I put the five here, and then I double everything else. So this becomes four, four, and six. So if I go back and check everything, now I have four ends on both sides. 
I have 12 H's on both sides, and I have 10 O's, because I have 10 O's there, and then four plus another six is the 10 on that side. So here's my balanced chemical reaction. And then with the next step, we're gonna actually do our stoichiometry. So we have the balanced equation written up here. And what you do is, from the original problem, it said we have two grams of ammonia and four grams of oxygen. So when you do these, you have to do stoichiometry twice. So you're gonna do stoichiometry times two. You're gonna have two different problems. And it does not matter whether you go to nitrogen monoxide or to water. You have to pick one of the products, but whichever one you pick is where you're going to end up when you do both your stoichiometry problems. So in this case, we picked nitrogen monoxide as the ending point. So we start with the 2 grams of ammonia. Ammonia is 17 grams in one mole. That's from the periodic table. Then we use the mole ratios from the balanced equation. For every four of those, we produce four nitrogen monoxides, and that's where they came from, so that came from the reaction. And then the last step is to go back to the periodic table, this time for nitrogen monoxide, and one mole of that added up to 30 grams. So when we do all those steps, we end up producing 3.53 grams of nitrogen monoxide. And then we go and do the same thing with our oxygen. We go oxygen, periodic table, do the molar mass of oxygen, do the mole ratio, go to the same product, so your last step is going to be identical, but this time we only produce 3 grams of nitrogen monoxide. If you do not have the same chemical at the end, you are not going to be able to tell which one was the limiting reactant. You have to make sure that you go to the same product each time you're doing those stoichiometry problems. So from that, what we found, this summarizes it, 2 grams of ammonia gave us 3.53 grams of nitrogen monoxide, and 4 grams of oxygen gave us 3 grams of nitrogen monoxide. To choose the correct answer, we said it's always the smallest one, because that will be when our limiting reactant runs out. So in this case, the correct answer is 3 grams of nitrogen monoxide, and that tells us then that the oxygen is the limiting reactant. It's the one that produced the smallest amount, which means my ammonia equals the excess. It's what we have more than enough of. We don't use it all up. So your bigger answer is your excess reactant, and your smaller answer that you choose as the correct one comes from the limiting reactant. And then finally, the question asked us to determine how much of the excess reactant was um, remaining, what didn't get used up. So what you're going to do is you always start with the limiting reactant, and you go to the excess reactant. Once you find out what that limiting reactant in is, it's going to start all your calculations. So I start with my 4 grams of oxygen, because that was my limiting reactant, and that's what I put in. And I'm going to do stoichiometry to my excess reactant. So I'm going to go from here to there. And then 32 grams of oxygen is one mole of oxygen. And there are five oxygens in the reaction. And I have four ammonias. And then the last step is to go back to the periodic table with ammonia this time and we would get 17 grams. So when I do all that and I get an answer, what I find is it's 1.70 grams of ammonia. That tells me that 1.7 grams of ammonia is all I needed to react with the four grams of oxygen. And if we read back at that original problem, we know that we put two grams of ammonia in. So if this much got used up, it reacted, and I originally had 2 grams. If I just take the 2 grams minus what was used, I'll find out what's left over, what's unreacted. So in this case, it's going to be 0.3 grams of ammonia is left unreacted. It's left over, we didn't use it. So when you're trying to find out your unreacted remains, you go from limiting reactant to excess reactant because that tells you how much was used up and then you take your original minus what you found and that tells you what's left over. 
So that's all we're going to do with limiting reactants on the podcast, just kind of giving you the general overview. We'll do a lot more in class, practice, and we'll do some activities in labs to help you get the hang of them.